To start painting, we must first select an object. Let's set Amplify Painter in the Custom Editor tools, and we're now ready to start painting. We can bring up the color selection window by pressing C, and that's really all you need to start painting, but let's try to create something a bit more elaborate. Before we start painting, I'll walk you through some of the basics. Amplify Painter does not alter your original assets. It creates a temporary copy when you select an object. To exit the painting mode, simply select one of the other options in the toolbar. Let's open the brush window by using the shortcut Shift to Tree. You'll see us use quite a few shortcuts, so be sure to check the manual wiki page for a full list. Let's dock it in a convenient spot. Here you can find the typical brush parameters you would expect such as size, opacity and rotation. You can also define the method used spacing and airbrush, which works by accumulation as in Photoshop. You can also toggle backface culling. You have a couple of alignment options to choose from. Think of it as stamping a texture onto the surface of your model. The default tangent wrap aligns to the surface and deforms the stamp to conform to it. While the tangent planner mode will fade its borders the farthest it gets from the surface, the UV mode will orient the stamp based on the mesh UVs, while the camera mode orients it based on the camera point of view. It's great for some cases, but may display a considerable amount of stretching. You can either paint on a single channel at a time, or simultaneously paint on any combination of active channels. You can select a single channel using left click, and select multiple channels by pressing Shift, left click. You can also use Alt, left click to select all channels. Amplify Painter includes an individual layer system that's not shared between any of the channels. This means that you'll be able to have different setups for each of your channels. We will exemplify later on the video. Note that each channel has a default layer. You can either use that or create new ones. I'll delete this one and create a new layer called Base Fur. I'll do the same for the Smoothness channel. I'll shift select the Smoothness channel layer as I want to paint on both the Albedo and Smoothness channel and set its value. I'll also adjust the Albedo to the color I want to use for the fur. Now with both channels active on the brush window, which defines which channels you're going to paint on, I can paint directly onto the layers I created. I'll use the shortcut Ctrl mouse wheel up to increase the brush size and paint away. Next, let's add a layer for skin. We'll change its albedo and smoothness value before painting. I'll disable backface culling for this one. Use the shortcut key control mouse wheel down to decrease the brush size and paint the skin area. Let's also color the ears. And for this one, I'll just pick from my previously saved colors. Let's also add a layer for the eyes in the Smoothness and Albedo channel. I'll set their color to white and the Smoothness to a higher value, as we want them to appear more reflective. Let's use the UV alignment so it's easier to only affect the eye area. I'll do the same for the other one. I'll quickly change into a mask texture with a harder edge and I'll create a layer for details. Let's adjust the albedo and smoothness and paint the nose. Now the inside of the mouth and the lips. We also want to add some skin tone variation, so I'll create a new layer and drag it next to our other skin layer. Note that I only want to paint onto the albedo channel here, so I'll select a single channel, instead of using both the smoothness and albedo channel. Before we paint, let's go back to our previous Gaussian mask and change the alignment to planner, so that we fade out the stamp border around the farthest parts of the surface.
let's just change the blend mode of the active layer to overlay. You know what, let's actually overlay it on top of everything else and set its opacity to 30%. Except for the eyes, of course. Let's add another layer for shading. We'll overlay this on top for additional variation. Some blue in the lower mouth area, yellow on top, and red in the middle. We don't want to affect the eyes, so I'll just move this down and set it to overlay at 15% opacity. We're getting there, but Suzanne is still looking a bit possessed. Let's paint the missing iris. Let's do the same for the other eye and also paint the pupil. As an example, let's go into our custom 3D view by using the shortcut Shift 8. Not only is the painter window a great place for look development, it's also a good way to isolate the object you're painting on. You can also paint here, of course, and you can change the light direction by moving your mouse while holding Shift and right mouse button. And it controls just as any other scene view with Alt right and left click to orbit and zoom respectively. You can also cycle between channels using V or Shift V to go forward and back, quite handy and also available in the default scene view. You can also set a custom skybox in the 3D Painter window, which is great to preview your model under different lighting conditions. We also provide a 2D Painter window, which displays an unwrapped view of your model based on its UVs. You can open it by pressing Shift 9, and you can of course also paint here. During this initial phase, you will have to export the painted textures in order to save what you created. To export the textures you've painted, let's first open the texture export window using the shortcut Shift 0. You can choose a specific folder, but it saves to your Assets folder root by default. And there you go! After pressing the button, your painted textures have been exported and are now ready to be used with any material. Please don't mind the reliance on key shortcuts, as all tools and their respective parameters along with the UI will no doubt change during development and evolve based on your feedback. Also note that this is a pre-alpha build, meant for testing only. We're still in the process of implementing our own non-destructive asset format, which will allow you to save and load what you paint without losing any of your layers or other relevant configurations. We hope you enjoyed this first Amplify Painter preview, and we look forward to learning more about your experience, so be sure to join the discussion via Discord or the official Unity forum. Thank you for watching.